Good morning, guys. As you guys can see, I'm at a I'm at a terminal. I'm at my home terminal right now. Just woke up. It is eight in the morning, and I'm supposed to be picking up a load in Pennsylvania and dropping it off in Massachusetts. So you know, it's not too bad. Not too bad. But um, I'm about to pre-trip right now. You guys are about to see that. Make sure all your lights are working. Okay. And type your splash guards. Splash guards are good. Make sure your tires are good. Kick them. Either kick them or use a hammer or whatever. And bang the hammer on your tires. Make sure they're good. Make sure no flats. Make sure the tread is good too. Alright guys. Now I'm supposed to find an empty trailer here. But I didn't find one. So I'm waiting for them to message me back and uh, give me a um, Give me a, a location to go to so I can pick one up. But in the meantime, I'm definitely gonna go to this truck stop really quick and I'm gonna get me a frap because I just need to wake up. I'm not really, I'm feeling very tired right now and uh, need an energy boost. Oh man, it's gonna be one of those gray days, huh? I don't really like gray days. I'm not really in the mood for a gray day, man. Surprisingly, some days I want it to be gray because sometimes it's just relaxing. You know, you don't feel like dealing with no sun in your eyes or anything like that. Just want it to be nice, gray, rainy. You just want to lay down, watch TV, and just vibe, man, you know? My Swift buddies, my Swift buddies. Alright. I'm just gonna go up in there really quick and I'm gonna give me a frap. Two 
do I want Ash Browns? Why not? I get two. Thank you. Be careful with the hash browns, they're very hot, okay? Okay. Beautiful she is. Man. Mm. Mm. Mm hmm Yup. That frap, that right there, 10 out of 10. Mm. You guys. Yes, I'm doing this out of boredom. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, man. I was on a roll, bro. All right, guys. So, they finally dispatched the load to me. Um, They just decided to let me bobtail there because they already sent me. They've already tried to send me to, like, two different locations and... I still couldn't find no empty trailer. Yeah, they, last night they sent me to two locations. And today when I woke up, they wanted me to try to find one in the yard, but I couldn't find one in the yard. So it just said, uh, just bob till there. So that's what I'm about to do. But yeah, guys. Um, somebody had asked me, uh, Somebody had asked me to explain like the terms and stuff like that, like, or the slang. Um, so I'm about to explain some of them to you guys right now. Um, so T calling is like, if you guys ever, ever hear me say, I'm about to T call this load. Basically what I'm saying is I'm about to pick up a load. Well, T calling is when you pick up a loaded trailer, right? You pick up a loaded trailer and you drop the trailer off at a terminal for another driver to take it and then complete it. That's what T calling is. So basically, I'm picking up a trailer, dropping it off at a terminal, and then another driver is going to take it and then deliver it. That's what that T-calling is. That's what I mean with, with that. Um, another thing that I that I say is sleeper birth split. Now, what a sleeper birth split is, basically, it, it, it allows you to start earlier. So, like, you don't have to sleep for 10 hours. You don't got to do a 10-hour break after, you, after your shift is done. You can start after 8 hours. But the thing is, with sleeper birth split, once you start after eight hours, you're only getting eight hours on your 11 hour clock. You're only getting eight hours on your 11 hour clock. So that's the downside of it. But what you can do is you can go off duty for two hours and get the remaining three hours. So that's how that works. But you gotta go off duty for two hours to get the extra three hours because you didn't do a 10 hour reset. So that's how that works. Um, another thing that I might say is lumper fee, or I might say, uh, yeah, I might just say I have to pay a lumper fee. So what a lumper is, is a lumper is the person that unloads you, they unload your trailer. That's what a lumper is, so. Yeah, they're just the people that load your trailer and load um, and unload them. But sometimes, not every location is like this. Some locations you have to pay a lumper fee, so they they charge you a fee for for them unloading your trailer. So that's what a lumper fee is. Uh, I might as well explain the hours of service to you guys too, right? So basically. Hours of service, right? 
us drivers we're only allowed to drive 11 hours a day legally we can't drive no more we can't drive no more than 11 hours so we have four clocks to worry about and i'm gonna tell you you have the 11 hour clock you have your 14 hour clock you have your 70 hour clock and you have our rest your rest break clock the rest break clock is only like it's eight hour clock basically so you can only drive eight hours before you have to take a rest break well a 30 minute rest break right so like i just said 11 hour clock we can only drive 11 hours a day that's the first clock you have to worry about second clock is your 14 hour clock so we can only be on duty for 14 hours a day legally can't be on duty no more than 14 hours so on duty basically means you're not driving but you're you're, you're you're not driving anytime you're not driving you're just sitting but you're still working that's that technically that's all on duty so like let's say you're getting fuel you're getting loaded or unloaded stuff like that that's when you put yourself on duty because we're not driving but technically we're still at work so you know that's when you put yourself on duty uh there's 70 hour clock Oh, even if you break down too, like if you break down the side of the road, then you, you, that's another time you put yourself on duty. Because even though you've broken down, you're still, it's still your work shift. 70 hour clock is your weekly clock. So we can only work 70 hours at most a week. Can't work no more than 70 hours a week. All right. So once you get to a certain point and once you, once you're running low on hours, in order to get your 70 hours back, you have to take a 34 hour reset. So you gotta be off duty for 30, 34 consecutive hours in order to get your 70 hours back that you worked. Uh, but another thing with the 70 hour clock is you don't, you don't necessarily have to do a 34 hour reset. You can work off recapped hours. What recap re, what recap hours are is you uh let's say I work let's say I worked nine hours this Monday next Monday I'm gonna get nine hours back because I worked nine hours last Monday I, let's say I worked I don't know six hours this Tuesday next Tuesday I'm gonna get those six hours back so you just get all the time that you worked the previous week you're getting that back the next week that's what recapped hours that's what recapped hours is so you do know, if you you'll never have to worry about doing a 34 hour reset if you just completely run down your whole clock like over and over and over and over and over again it's those days where you don't drive that many hours that really messes it up as far as just running off recaps because some days you're not going to drive that much some days you're going to drive you're going to burn out your whole clock you're basically going to drive a full 10 hours and there's going to be days where you do you drive i don't know what four hours five hours you know so that's what really messes it up and that's what stops you from being able to just consistently run off recap hours because in order to consistently do that you have to consistently burn out your clock so that's how that is i've been running off recap hours for a little minute now i can't remember the last i, I don't think i've had a single day off since i started working <laughs> ever since i came back from my home time so that's what i've been working off of just recap hours um and you have to worry about your rest break clock that's the fourth clock okay for your rest break clock like I, like I said, it's eight hours. You can only drive eight hours before you have to take a 30 minute rest break, okay? And you can try to, you can take a break uh, anytime you want to, but your, 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 30, your 30 minute clock isn't gonna, you taking a break isn't really gonna affect your 30 minute clock until you drive for at least three hours, so once you drive for three hours and take a 30 that's when uh it'll actually count so if you try to take a 30 minute rest break before you've driven three hours it's not going to count so you gotta you gotta you have to at least drive three hours for it to even 
have an effect, you know what I'm saying? Because if you don't, it's just gonna stay at the same amount of time. If that makes any sense, I don't, that's the best way I can explain it. Um, but just know you can't drive no more than eight hours without taking your 30 minute rest break, okay? And it's not gonna, you can take your 30 minute, you can take a break whenever, honestly, and you can take a break however long you need to take it. But um, as long as it's 30 minutes and as long as you drive, you drive no more than eight hours, and as long as you uh, drive for at least a minimum of three hours before you take it, then it should it should be no issues and it's gonna actually take effect. So that's the best way I can explain that. Um, so yeah, whenever you guys hear me talk about my hours, that's what I mean. So I hope you guys have a better understanding of like the hours. You know, it's 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 it's, it's easier to understand once you're actually doing it, but. If you're not doing it, just hearing somebody explain it to you, it's it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it. But it's not that it's not that uh it's not that complicated. Me personally, I I usually don't just put myself on duty whenever I stop. I usually put myself off duty because you save time that way because when you put yourself off duty your time isn't going down on your 70 hour clock okay now if you put yourself if you have yourself on duty your 70 hour clock is going to go down so yeah i don't know a lot of i, I don't know if you guys also do that but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I think it's just smart to just don't put yourself on duty. Put yourself off just to save time. You get to get more loads in, you know. You get to drive more doing it, doing that. Um, because imagine, like, you're getting loaded and you have yourself on duty. And they take, like, three hours. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's three hours wasted off of your 70-hour clock, man. Three hours you're not even driving. So... You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm saying. Like, be smart about it. Like, don't put yourself on duty when you can just have yourself off duty and your your clock, your 70-hour clock won't go down. I mean, your 14-hour clock will go down because your 14-hour clock never stops. Okay? I don't know if I said that when I was explaining it, but your 14-hour clock doesn't stop. It just keeps going the whole time. You can't stop it. Your 70-hour clock... I mean, yeah, your 70 hour clock and your 11 hour clock you have control over. Because when you put yourself off duty, those clocks stop. And I'm gonna give you guys another tip, okay? So, I don't know, I don't know if everybody's like device or whatever they're using for their hours, but with Swift, we use Zonars. So, um, I don't know, I don't know if every, if every uh, piece of equipment is the same with this, but, what you could do if the um, if you're sitting for two hours, right? What you can do to save, to get some time back on your 14-hour clock, is put yourself on sleep over split. After two hours, your time will stop. That's when that's. I mean, you, so you can't stop your 14. You can. It's very. It's possible. It's very much possible. But it's only if you put yourself off duty, and you're at least sitting for two hours. Then your time will go it'll, it will jump back to the time where you first went off and it will just stay there but like i said it's only after two hours of you sitting there off duty that's the only time that works and you gotta think and you gotta and after you after you've moved um after you've moved after that then after that you can't stop it because you, you can only stop it once a day and that's after two hours of you sitting and after that once you start driving again it, it doesn't stop Regardless of you, regardless of if you sit for another two hours again, for whatever reason, it's just gonna keep going down. So, if you guys didn't know that, I just, I just blessed you. I really did, cause nobody told me that. My mentor didn't teach me that. I kind of like found that out almost like my own. So, yeah. Tips and tricks, man. Tips and tricks. If you know how to, if you know how to really run your clock and run your hours and run the right way. Trust me, guys. Trust me. You, you're gonna make a good amount of money. It's all about how you 
run your clock. Be smart about it. Be smart about it. You want to make sure whenever your clock is going, it's actually you driving as much as possible. You don't want your clock to be ticking and you just sitting. Okay, so just 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 keep that in mind. Yeah, you could put yourself on duty when you're not moving, bro. But just 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 know that's gonna affect how much you get paid because. We don't get paid if we're not if the wheels ain't turning you're not earning i know you've heard that phrase so many times but it's so true if your wheels are not if you're not actually moving bro you're not getting paid for that so you want to make sure when you're not moving and you're not getting paid your clock isn't going down because that like i said that's gonna affect how many loads you can do and that's you know it's just gonna affect how much you get paid so just just remember that Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's also two more terms that I want you guys to get familiar with is bobtailing and tandems. Because I know I'm gonna say that a lot. All right, so bobtailing is basically when you don't have a trailer, you're just driving with your tractor. Okay, you're not hooked up to any trailer, it's just your truck. That's what bobtailing is. So whenever I say I'm about to bobtail here or, you know, I'm bobtail right now, that's basically what that means. It's just, I don't have, I'm not hooked up to a trailer. I'm just driving with my tractor. That's what that means. Another thing that you guys might hear me say a lot is tandems. Now tandems are the wheels on the trailer. We call those tandems. So when I say I'm gonna slide my tandems forward or I'm gonna slide my tandems back, basically what I'm saying is I'm gonna slide the wheels on my trailer forward or back it's basically what I'm saying and the thing about your tandems is that the farther back your tandems are the slower the trailer reacts you know what I'm saying and the the more the farther up your tandems are slid the faster your trailer will react as far as like turns and as far as you backing up so also keep that in mind so let's say you're turning a tight you have to make a tight right turn it's going to be a lot harder to make that turn with your tandem slid all the way to the back than if your trailer if your tail if your tandems are slid all the way to the front you know what i'm saying because if your tandem is slid all the way to the back then your, your trailer is going to take forever to to turn it's going to take forever to respond but if it slid all the way to the front, it's gonna respond a lot faster. So it's gonna be a lot easier for you to make that turn. And it's also a lot easier to back into tight spaces when your tandems are slid all the way to the front too. So just, just keep, you gotta keep that stuff in mind guys. If you come out here, like, just keep that in mind. Like, cause your tandems aren't always gonna be in the same position. So just be mindful of where your tandems are, at, like for whatever trailer that you're hauling, because like I said, if you gotta back into a tight dock and your tandems are slid all the way to the back, you're gonna have to be a lot more careful because it's gonna take forever for your trailer to react to you turning the steering wheel, like whatever direction you're turning it in. And you gotta adjust your tandems based off of the weight that you're, the weight of your load. You know what I'm saying? To balance out the weight. Because you don't want to be overweight. If you're overweight, like if you go to a way station and you're overweight, you can get a ticket for that. So you want to make sure your tandems are slid in the appropriate spot to where your balance the, the load is balanced.
Okay, so basically here now, drop wasn't bad at all. Wasn't bad. It was only about like an hour and a half away. And I think from here to the drop off, I, I'm not if I'm I'm not too sure, but I think it's about like four hours away. So that's not bad either. Thing about driving regional is that when you drive regional, you uh you have less you, the drive is less like it's shorter but it's more stops that's the thing otr drivers they they drive and it takes them like it could take them like two days to get to just, just to get through one load there's two days but that load could be like 1200 miles or something that one load you know me i get like I get multiple loads to make up for that. Yeah, my runs are shorter, but I get I get more loads. <laughs> so my three loads equals they like one load basically. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm here to pick up a load. No. No. Alright, so because you're doing half the thing that you find dispatchers, this is a half that load. If they do ask, it's um dangerous, okay? Okay. It's um uh, over a little bit over one thousand pounds. Okay. okay. Alright. Okay, so apparently this is a hazmat load. So I have to reach out to my driver leader so this dude here just hit my truck well he just hit my mirror As y'all can see, he ain't do no damage, but definitely hit it. As you guys can see, he ain't, he ain't do no damage to my truck necessarily, but he still hit it. And uh, I ain't gonna report him or nothing like that, because like I said, he ain't do no damage. He just, he just skimmed it, basically. Yeah, man. When if, if somebody ever hits your truck, bro, make sure they apologize. He apologized. He did, but make sure they like apologize, bro, because you're not just gonna hit my truck and then like just keep on moving and act like you didn't just do what you just did. You know what I'm saying? Like, now nah, if he didn't apologize, I probably definitely would have called somebody up <laughs> and let him know, gave him his whole truck info, all that. I probably am. I probably am still exposing him in a way because I did show his truck, his truck number and stuff. But it's like if somebody sees it, they see it. They don't. They you know he's he's straight. Yeah, I, it's not that deep because he ain't, he ain't actually take off my mirror. But uh, the load that I was supposed to pick up from this Home Depot, I can't pick it up because it's a hazmat load. So as of right now, I've not even dispatched anything. They might give me something for tomorrow. I don't know. I mean, I don't even have that many hours to really work with. So, 
we'll see. I'm just going to try the Paula for now, though. If they give me something else, then I'll pick it up. But if not, it is what it is. I'm not tripping. I got to do a reset anyway. Easy money. I like that. I like that a lot. I really do. Oh, this is, these are reserved. Yeah, these are reserved for whatever reason. Okay. Okay, he's, he's turning that way. All right. Yeah, I didn't want to be one of the, one of those guys, but I guess I'm about to be. Because don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't like when I see bobtails parked in truck stops like and they're not parked with the cars because it's like you're, you're taking up a space with your bobtail somebody could have somebody could have somebody needed that space somebody could have took it somebody with a trailer could have backed into that space but you're bobtail and you just taking up a space like I don't know there's something about that That just annoys me. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. This truck stop really is very small. I gotta do a reset here then I wouldn't necessarily be mad all right guys so they gave me another load they gave me a load that I'm supposed to pick up at the terminal and drop off at a Walmart upstate but I guess I'll just pick that up tomorrow and just do that load tomorrow because there's really no point in me doing it today and I'm really tired so I'm just gonna heat up some food, um, some Chinese food that I had last night. Yeah, and I had white rice with it, but I pretty much finished the rice. There's just a little bit left, but uh, yeah, I'm about to just heat this up, eat real quick, and then I'm probably just gonna take a nap. But yeah, I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. All right, man, as you guys can see, it is the next day. Uh, yeah, they had to take the load off me like I said yesterday. So I gotta pick the load up. I gotta pick this new load up at the terminal and then I'm dropping it off upstate. So that's what we're gonna do, but I'm gonna do my pre-trip first.
area so so hey guys I stayed at this pilot last night and uh, wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad I was actually able to connect to the Wi-Fi and everything like that I think the problem with me trying to connect to the Wi-Fi every time I come to a pilot was because before when I used to try to connect to it I was trying to use my TV because I used to have a TV in my truck but I threw it away because it was just taking up unnecessary space and uh, I want to get another one but I want to actually mount it this time so that it's not taking up as much space but I don't know when I'm gonna do that Another thing that I forgot, I realized this like as I was going to sleep. Remember when I was talking about the terms yesterday and like the slangs and stuff like that? Another slang that you guys are gonna hear me say is PC. What PC is, that's when that's called personal conveyance. So personal conveyance is when you're running out of time on your clock and you gotta use that as an emergency. So it's like when you, let's say you have like 10 minutes left on your clock. That's when you want to go into PC because you don't have, you're running out of time. You want to use that as an emergency. But the thing about PC is, I don't know, every company is different with it, I think. Some companies, I think you can use it for as long as you want to. But with Swift, we can only use it for 25 miles. I believe we can only use it for 25 miles. We can't use it for no more than 25 miles. After that, then we could potentially get in trouble for that. So, yeah, PC is just, you use it when you're running out of time and you use it to park somewhere safe. So, if you ever, you ever hear me say, oh, I, have, I might have to PC it, that means I have no more time really. And I'm gonna need to go into PC in order to make it to the safe haven or parking spot. That's legal, you know? That's within 25 miles, obviously. Best believe, I, I kinda wish we were able to use PC like for as long as we wanted to. Because if that was the case, honestly, I probably would have gotten rid of my car, if I'm being honest with you. Because I feel like at that point, what's the point in us having, what's the point of me having a car or a personal vehicle when I can just drive my truck everywhere I go, you know? just you go in a PC when I'm not working and just draw you feel me but we can't do that unfortunately so and another thing about PC is that we can't use PC just to use PC you know what I'm saying like we have to use it either if we're if we're driving to a safe haven or if we're like um, if we need groceries you know what I'm saying? Like, I think those are like the two, the two reasons, or the two except, only two ways that we can use them. Yeah, I think those are the only two ways that we can use them. Is if you need groceries or a safe haven to drive to, but other than that, you can't just like, go in the PC and be like, oh, drive into a friend's house, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't use it for like, unnecessary reasons. It has to be a good reason as to why you're PCing and you have to be low on, on your clock. If you're also not like low on your clock, I mean, I actually, I don't think you have to be low on your clock. I think you can, you can use it still like, but I, I'm not sure. I, I'm just saying me personally, I only use it when I'm low on my clock and I only use it for, you know, if I actually need groceries or if I actually am driving to a safe haven and I don't have enough time on my clock to even make it to one. Those are the only times I use it. But personally, I don't like using it because it makes it seem like I didn't manage my time well and it also makes it look, I don't like how it looks on my logs, but that's just me personally, you know? Okay guys, so I'm back at the terminal now. We about to pick this loaded trailer up, but first, I gotta get a frat, guys. I got to. I, I just, I don't know, I'm really craving one. 
Even though I had one yesterday, I just really want another one like today because that frap yesterday just hit different. And I would get two hash browns again, but it's not even the morning time anymore. It's literally 12, 23. So unfortunately I can't get hash browns with it. It's looking pretty busy in this truck stop right now. I like that color. I really like the color of that truck. Next to this other swept truck. Yeah. My swift brethren or sisterin, I don't know. I don't know if sisterin sisterin is the right term for that, but yeah. Gotta include girls too, man, because I've been seeing a lot of female truck drivers doing their thing and I respect that, I really do. It's a beautiful thing to see. Oh. Okay. And it's double cup just because I don't want it to like spill all over you. Oh, okay. Thank you. You too. Alright, guys. Good. Look at that. Beauty. Like I was saying, those two girls right there just got out of that truck. So I think that's a coincidence because I was just talking about how I've been seeing a lot of female truckers recently and I think that's a beautiful thing. So hey man, if you if you a girl and you thinking about getting into this profession, go for it. Honestly, you could do it, man. Don't let people tell you that only men can do this, or don't let people make you think that this is only a job for men. Because there's a lot of women that do this job too, and they do it just as just as well. So don't be afraid. All right. Oh my God, look at that. Man. Hmm. Oh my God. All right. All right, let's go get fuel now. Today's gonna be a long day, I feel like, man. I'm definitely ending later than I want to. I usually like to end at like, what, three or two? Today, I'm not gonna be finished till about like seven. Maybe six, I don't know, but that's way too late still.
windshield, but why not? Alright guys, so now we're going to pick this load up at terminal, and then after we pick the load up we're going to head off. I got to brush my teeth though man, so I definitely didn't brush my teeth yet today. Oh, you nasty. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Don't judge me guys, I'm a truck driver, okay? I, I really struggle out here. I really do. Shoot, sometimes I, I don't get to brush my teeth till like what? Nine o'clock at night, you know? Sometimes it's just like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, we can't brush our teeth. We can't be perfect human beings, you know? We don't live a normal lifestyle. Wendy's. I really love me some Wendy's, man. What's you guys' favorite what's your guys' favorite fast food restaurant? Like if you guys could eat like at one fast food place for the rest of your life at, where would it be? I don't know. I don't know what mine would be. This is a very unhealthy question, but like I'm just curious. If I could eat one fast food for the rest of my life, what would it be? Uh, I really don't know. I really don't know. Because I really love me some Wendy's, guys. I, I really do. Wendy's is just so good. Five Guys is really good, too. Oh, man. Chipotle. Oh, that's a really tough question. I think it's between those three. Honestly, Wendy's, Chipotle, or Five Guys. I love Five Guys. It's just they're so expensive. But I love their fries and I love their burgers. So they're pretty top. They're pretty top tier, in my opinion.
don't know how that ended up like that. That's it right there. We are good, we are good. All right guys, I'm back on the road. We had enough state to the Walmart to drop this load off. Now I know you guys probably been wondering why I use my cell phone GPS with my trucking GPSs. Well, it's always good to use three GP, uh, GPS's because three GPS's, that's better than using two. And on top of that, sometimes the trucking GPS's are actually wrong. To be perfectly honest with you guys, sometimes the phone or the car GPS is right. And sometimes I'll have two GPS's telling me the right direction and that one GPS is telling me the wrong direction so it's always good to have an extra GPS so that you um, so that you're safe and you know which GPS is telling you the right thing and which is which GPS is telling you the wrong thing but don't get me wrong though sometimes there can be two of the GPS is telling you a certain direction and they're both wrong and the one that's telling you a different direction is actually right so you just gotta basically, you basically have to, at that rate, once it gets to that point, it's like, if I'm still on the highway, 
and there's like one GPS telling me to stay on the highway, I usually just stay on the highway. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing I learned from my mentor when I was in his truck. And that was one of the best, one of the best pieces of advice he he gave me while I was with him. He was like, hey, stay on the interstate as much as you can. The interstate is your best friend. All right, now, if you got a GPS that's telling you to get off the interstate, you got one that's telling you to stay on it, stay on it. Because that GPS is most likely right. And, G I mean, the highway, you just can't go wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? It's just a straight ride, and you don't got to worry about tight turns or whatever the case may be. So, you know, that's one piece of advice that I'm going to give you guys right now is to make sure you stay on the highway as much as possible. And um, also with your three GPS's that you use, make sure you also get an atlas, just in case you know something is going wrong with your technology or something like that. It's always good to have an atlas map. I don't really use it, but it's good to just have it just in case of an emergency situation and like none of the GPS's are working and you don't know where to go. Just use the atlas map and then you can figure out where to go from there. Choose your fighter. Lightning in fire. Fight. I'm really tired of driving in snow like this this right here I've said it in the last video this is ridiculous man I've been driving in snow for like a couple days in a row now and I'm getting tired of it I really am it's getting old now at this point at first it was like all right it's, it's, you know, it's cute or whatever but now it's just like come on bro Come on, man. I just drove past somebody that was broken down. And I think, I guess something was wrong with his tire. His tire's probably heated up or something. Or, um, he probably had a tire blowout. Some, definitely some of his tire, because I just smelled a whole bunch of rubber. Um, for a second, I thought that was something wrong with my truck. And that's what I was smelling, but it was, you know... It was obviously the person that was broken down. <clears throat> but I smelled the rubber like maybe like half a mile before I, I ran into him. So that's what made me think it was my truck. We're basically here though. It's like six minutes away. driving up hills and I'm heavy. 
It's like, man, when you're heavy and you're going up a hill, bro, you can be going as slow as 20 miles. Like, you literally, the speed limit could be, to be, um, could be like 65 or something like that. And you're driving like 20 miles per hour. It's like, bro. So tomorrow, guess what, guys? Tomorrow, I'm actually taking my 34-hour reset. So I'm not working tomorrow. I can actually just relax, edit, and just chill. You know what I'm saying? I might record a video tomorrow, but I don't, I'm don't. i not sure what video I could record. Maybe like a truck tour or a truck tour. I don't know, something. But if I don't record anything tomorrow, just know I'm still editing something for you guys. Probably this video right here. So, just know. I got y'all, man. If I can make one person, even if I get like one viewer, you know what I'm saying? As long as that one viewer enjoys my content and as long as I'm making that, you know, one person is looking forward to my videos, that's that, that really makes my day right there, honestly, you know what I'm saying? I wish I had that mindset back when I was doing YouTube before, you know. I was so worried about the numbers instead of just doing it for fun, you know. So, I'm still going to come out with the daily content, you know what I'm saying. Even if that means doing it for one viewer, you know what I'm saying. Like, that's, I just enjoy doing this, man. Thank God the snow isn't, like, sticking. I, I, I really still don't know where I'm gonna park up tonight. I'm probably gonna park up at the Syracuse terminal Because all the truck stops are probably full by now. It's already what 7 738 so Yeah Unless I reserve a spot bro. I'm not I'm most likely not gonna find a spot And I usually don't end around this time you guys know I like to end at like at least three at the latest, I like to end at four, bro. At the latest. At the absolute latest, four. <clears throat> I'm usually done by two or three, man. But I got dispatched. Uh, they dispatched me a little late on this load. I got dispatched on this load at like 10 in the morning. So that's the only reason why I'm ending so late. Um, I guess the load wasn't ready because... Maybe uh, the driver didn't drop it at the terminal yet. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that was uh, this load was T called to me. So that's the only reason I can think of as to why the load wasn't ready right away. degrees
How you doing, bud? I'm good. How are you? It's pretty cold out there. <laughs> it's pretty cold out there, guys. Pretty cold. Oh man, I can't find it down. There you go. I haven't been to this Walmart in a little while, so I think B is like right there. Like as soon as I, after this stop sign, I just make a left. Or just keep going straight. I think B is on the right side. Could be wrong. Uh, yeah, that is B. See? See, I remember. Alright, cool. Are there any spots in me though? I feel, uh, that's definitely a spot right there. out of the scale here so that scale was not there before guys pull-ups watch this no pull-ups no pull-ups oh I might have to I might have to hold on Could just leave it here but that's kind of sloppy it's kind of sloppy so kind of shot it a little bit too much to the left trailer hopefully they have one this Walmart usually always has empty so I'm not really too worried but I don't want to get my hopes up still you know Just 
moment of truth, guys. We're about to see if they have empty trailers. If they don't, I mean, I'm not gonna be too mad because it's not like I'm working tomorrow, but it would be nice to have one just, just so that I won't have to struggle to find one when I do work on Monday. Oh, oh, okay. I see, I see a Swift. I see one. It looks like it's an old trailer though. I don't like, oh, okay, I see two. I see three, okay. All right, hold on. Uh, let me see, what, what, what's that trail down there? Let me see the one down there. Oh yeah, this one. This one's gonna be the one right here. Always try to grab a trail that's new, like the newest one that's there. Try to get the newest one. You can tell the year of the trailers by the the first two numbers. So if it's like you see how that trailer is one eight, that means it's a 2018 trailer. So it's always the first two numbers that tell you how new the trailer is. Or what year the trailer is. Ain't gonna go that way. God, man. All right. Yeah, and I'm still wearing Crocs. Unbelievable. Oh, Jesus. I'm getting ice in my socks. Yep. It's empty. It is empty. Okay. All right. Uh, gotta check the tires now. Make sure the tire's good. Oh ho. Check the other side. Guys, I'm struggling. <laughs> I am struggling in my feet are freezing because ice is going inside of my crocs okay we're good we are good we are good you guys see my shadow It's good, it's good. Okay. 
Yeah. This fixed. See how this is coming off? Well, I don't even think I have to get it fixed, but I don't like how it's doing that. Alright, All right, guys, so I'm gonna take my 30 minute rest break really quick, and then we're gonna drive somewhere to park for the night. Alright, now this rest area apparently has a chick-fil-a guys so i'm probably gonna try to stop right here just for that simple fact right there um but nine times out of ten it's most likely going to be full just because it, it does have a chick-fil-a let's be honest but i'm still gonna check it anyway just to see so fingers crossed guys good burger soup i mean it's burger king but yeah burger king is pretty decent i'm just trying to stop here for the chick-fil-a honestly man. please don't be full please don't be full Blaming Chick fil A, guys. Oh, yes. Is there really a Chick-fil-A? Like, is it like built? Let me see. I'm gonna go check and see. Because if it's not finished, if they're not done building it yet, there's really no point in me staying here. It's done. It's really a Chick-fil-A. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna sleep here. I'm gonna take my 34 hour reset right here, guys. Okay guys, so I just parked up at this rest area upstate. Um well it's a service area. 
but I just parked here. I'm about to take my 34 hour reset. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you all in the next one. And I'm out. Peace.